Now, if you have ever presented your case studies like this, or like this, it's okay though. We've all been there before. In this video, I want to share with you and show you exactly how I present my case studies to clients that have paid up to $150,000 per project. Now, I'm sure there are many different and better ways out there, but this has worked very well for me. Now, hopefully you are able to learn a thing or two. Let's get into it. Oh, and by the way, if you do want access to this presentation file, make sure to check the link in the description. It's free, it's built with Figma, and it's also responsive. Hi, my name's Michael, better known as Mizco, and I'm the founder of The Designership, where we teach designers how to become legendary. In this video, I'm going to first present to you a case study that was based on a true story, then I will share with you four learnings that I've made that most designers don't know and it's the reason why their presentations fail. So let's get right into it guys. Redefining the way that Australians buy and sell automobiles. Back in 2019 in January, a company A, which was also a Fortune 500 company, which means that they were in the top 500 largest US companies based on revenue, wanted to expand their product offering into Australia. So the problem that we realized was that in Australia, there is no seamless experience that handles the end-to-end -end sale of an automobile that customers are truly satisfied with. So through further discussions with their team, the objective that we defined was that we wanted to research strategize and design an end-to-end -end PWA, in other words, progressive web app, experience to help Australians buy and sell automobiles with a focus on increasing conversion rates by 20% on the previous MVP. So I've broken down the project into three key phases, emp empathize, conceptualize, and also design. So in the very first stage of the project, we really lacked understanding in what customers really wanted, needed, and expected from us. So there were three key questions that we wanted answered at the beginning of the project in phase one, which was current frustrations and pain points. What do they really want and what do they really need? So then we dived into a very intensive two-week research sprint and we did over 10 user interviews with 10 different user, uh, user participants. We also investigated forums, public forums, Reddit, and also Facebook groups. And then we also mapped out a competitor and SWOT analysis to help us understand what was the current product offering that the industry was providing our users. So we dived deep into user research and user interviews, and there were three key takeaways that we learned from this, one, two, and three. And with our Facebook group investigations, we also discovered some really interesting insights, which included one, two, and three. So once we got all the primary research done and we had all this data, we then had to jump into the conceptualization of the project. We needed to take all that data and actually understand it and synthesize it. So in stage two of the project, once we had all this primary data, we were quite overwhelmed with all the insights. We needed to start to prioritize, to start forming a strategy on what is the actual experience that we are going to design as a team. So first we need to understand the key pain points, wants and needs from our customers or potential customers that we learned from the user interviews. We then need to classify all the insights that we got gathered. We need to be able to bucket them into categories where we were able to understand the priorities of them. And then we need to present all the synthesis to our stakeholders. We need to understand the data, form our strategy, and then present it to them to get stakeholder buy-in. So then we just jumped into secondary research to really form our product strategy and experience. So there were three key things that we did in this stage. We created affinity maps to better understand our general audience as a whole. We then also prioritize customer pain points, wants and needs. So then that would also help us prioritize our very own roadmap and sort of the features that we wanted to pack into the second version of this product. And then we need to present all those insights to our stakeholders and really document it in a way that we were able to get their buy-in. So first thing we did was we jumped into an affinity map and there were three key takeaways once again that we were able to pull out, which was one, two, and three. 
We then jumped into a customer journey map. So we really plotted and really understood exactly where were the gaps, where were the inefficiencies, where were the areas that we really wanted to focus on to take this product to the next level. And that included one, two, and three. And then overall, because there was so much data, these were some of the key takeaways that we were able to gather from this project that really helped us redefine the way that Australians would buy and sell motor vehicles in Australia. And this included one, two, and three. So now that we've done all our research, we've also synthesized all the research, formed a strategy, and also got stakeholder buy-in, what we wanted to do is move into the design phase. So now that we're in the design phase, we actually realized we were very we're on a very tight deadline and developers need to start building very soon. So three of the main questions that we really need to answer before we start design was, first, should we design mobile first? And this was a learning and an insight from our research that a lot of people and most people would be taking photos of their vehicles with their mobile. And what that meant was that could be an opportunity for us to seamlessly transition them into our experience simply from their phone. So we wanted to make sure that the mobile experience was really top notch. Second, do we need to design a design system right now? We really need to understand efficiency. And we also wanted to make sure when we build this product, it was done right from day one. So we need to understand, did we need the design system right now? And also, what was our overall visual design language? Because this was an American company, a US-based company coming into Australia, were we utilizing the exact same design language that they were using based in the States? So once those questions were answered, we pretty much jumped straight into design because we were on a very tight deadline. So we built a design system as a priority to make sure that the design to development handover was very efficient. We also moved forward with a mobile first approach and we really focused on building the homepage and the funnel first to get stakeholder buy-in and once the overall design language was approved, we were able to scale out the operation and design all the subsequent screens very quickly. So here is a glimpse into our design system and there were three key takeaways that was very interesting while we were building out a scalable design system for this project, which included one, two, and three. Now also, as we were designing specific features and flows for this project, there were also some very interesting insights as well, included one, two, and three. Now overall, with all the designs that we created, all the different flows, all the different devices that we really focused on, the interesting insights included one, two, and three. Now that leads us over to the outcomes. We successfully launched this project three months later and we celebrated at a rooftop bar with the entire company A team. Now these, which were also facts, we actually gained over 90,000 car listings within the first three months. We increased the conversion rate by 30% based on their previous MVP. And ultimately, this product was also acquired by eBay Classifieds in, I believe, 2019. So that wraps it up for this case study. Over to you guys for any questions or any concerns or anything that you want to dive deeper into. You can also read the full case study at thedesignship.com slash gently smash the like button. Now, here are four things that you probably didn't know when you were presenting your work to potential clients or even potential employers. Now, the first one is it's not about your design process. It's not that you started with research, you went into wireframes, and then you UI design. It's about the narrative. What were the challenges that you were facing and why did you take those next steps that you did? An employer is not assessing you whether or not you remember the design process that you taught in the boot camp or that you read online. They are really assessing you on your mindset, the way that you think, the way you solve problems, and how you form relationships between insights and solutions and the way you communicate those ideas. Now, the second thing is, it's about the narrative. Now, there's a thing called the three-act structure, which is a model that divides a story into three parts, setup, confrontation, and resolution. Without going too much detail, the goal is to set up the story, build the confrontation, which are the challenges linked with the solutions, and then the resolution, where everyone lives happily ever after. Now, this model was created by Sid Field in his 1979 book, Screenplay, and has been adopted by world-leading scriptwriters, movie producers, and so much more. As a designer, we can definitely learn from this and make our own case studies more interesting by contrasting the problems that we face with the solutions that we form. Now, the third key takeaway is don't overwhelm your audience. If the person on the other end loses concentration or is overwhelmed, 
you've lost that opportunity already. Now, obviously, there's a lot you need to cover in a case study, but when it comes to presenting, I always lean on the concept of the rule of thirds. If you noticed, everything I was explaining to you were in threes. Three stages, three key insights, three examples. And if you notice that, let me know in the comments below. I personally find three is a perfect number. It's neither too little or too overwhelming. Now, last but not least, the story needs to be interesting. Those key insights that I kept repeating throughout the presentation, those need to turn heads. Now, I obviously couldn't publicly share all the insights from this case study because they were quite confidential, but these need to wow your potential employer or client. So hopefully you found a lot of value in this video. Make sure to download the free template. Link is also in the description. If you want to level up as a designer, head over to thedesignship.com and I will see you in the next video very soon.